Hello everyone. Welcome to our new series of videos designed to help you make the most out of your life experiences. Cyberbrainer is an online training platform designed to help individuals and teens learn the latest technologies and become certified professionals producing a comprehensive learning experience. In this tutorial video we will discuss about SAP Business Objects. In this video we will be taking an in-depth look at the SAP Business Objects suite of software solutions which enable you to manage and analyze data in a more efficient and effective way. By the end of this video series, you will have a better understanding of how SAP Business Objects can help you manage and analyze your data. Here are the topics covered in this video series. Intro on SAP BobG Data Foundation and Joints Business Layer and Information Design Tool Prompts, filters, and block types. Working with sections. Scope of analysis. Advanced interactive analysis. Central management console. Crystal reports. Please do like, share, and subscribe to our channel to know more about such interesting technologies and watch other videos in our Cyberbrainer channel. For further details, contact us at sales at the rate cyberbrainer.com. Now let us get into the video. It is a capable of integrating information and people at one place. So like uh, it can integrate reports and the users who consume the reports in a one environment. It is kind of a repository. So business objects actually it was an independent company. It is not from SAP, but it after it got a good recognition, SAP got acquired this in 2007 to leverage its business intelligence capabilities. Now it is known as SAP Business Objects. Some people also call it as a Bob J or Boxy. Actually, SAP Business Objects is a, it's not a single tool. It is a collection of front-end applications. It consists of uh, multiple tools like Web Intelligence, UDT, IDT, Dashboard, Explorer, and all. I'll show you that in our next slides. It is mainly used to view, sort, and analyze the business intelligence data. Uh, <clears throat> why SAP BO to a professional? The BO training is one of the most important and lucrative field of BI. As you know, the business intelligence is very um, high in the market now. So like uh, we have um, so many opportunities in business intelligence. So business objects is one of the tool in business intelligence so if we if you are interested in data if you want if you are interested to create some reports if you want to play with data and get some meaningful insights so business objects is a place for you so it is very important for a professional like us to settle in a data field it is like a starting point if we are comfortable with this basics of sap business objects and basics of reporting we can mold ourselves to any other visualization tool as per the market requirement. I'm telling like a BO is a part of business intelligence. So what are the benefits of business intelligence? Uh, let me tell you like a background. Uh, we know like a, any company, whether it is a small or big, it stores information. Like if we go to some pharmacy, pharmaceutical uh, store, or if we go to some Walmart or somewhere, there they collect information about the product. They maintain the information like what are the products that has been sold, which customer has bought it, and their phone numbers, and their price, everything they store. So if you just imagine like they are keeping every information like uh, for every product and for every customer. So they might be storing millions of records of data, right? So mm -hmm. let's have a, the session as an interactive. So stop me whenever you get any doubt. So they'll be storing this much of data. And do you think any time, like what do they do with this data? They'll use this for their business decisions. So they will be storing the data in some other database like Oracle or SQL or SAP HANA. So they'll be storing, per year, they'll be storing some hundreds of tables of data. But 
by just storing that data they will not get any information from that so they cannot go uh, to the tables directly and they cannot query they can they'll not be knowing anything of useful so here comes the business intelligence by using those tables of data by mod by you creating some schemas and by creating reports on top of that to get the information like in particular year if the uh, our customer or our executive want to know like in 2018 which region has performed better in 2022 first quarter which product has performed better which is poor what do we need need to do to get the better results so that that is all possible using business intelligence if you see here so the benefits of business intelligence is data driven business decisions they have data then they are you they are using that data to create proper reports based on the requirement so that they can take the business decisions based on the data it's not like a random decision they'll have all solid evidences and proofs and they'll know like where to invest and all the number 2 benefit is increased efficiency as they know what are their pain points what are their low areas and where they are performing better and based on those information they'll take the decisions and the efficiency will be increased number 3 is boost roi roi means return on investment so they know where to invest and which campaigns to produce and which products to sell more and which regions which customers uh, for which customers there is a, like a, for which region our, if our sales are not that good so we can go to that region and we can make more campaigns and we will know we we can make some uh, surveys on the customers like why what are they expecting from us so based on that they can boost their roi and increased competitive advantage in this ma uh, current market the competition is everywhere so we should know thoroughly about our business then only we can take the decisions and increase our competition in the market and also improved customer experience based on the customer experience we will also store the information about the customer which in, uh, like uh, there are some uh, databases like uh, which customer has logged in what they have seen like a product recommendations which customer have seen the ads multiple times i mean how many uh, how many ads are being seen so based on that we can improve the customer experience also so it is all like we will collect everything from our company like uh, from our uh, data like a uh, business data sales finance customer usage data we will collect everything and we'll store in database tables and we will create schemas on top of that and we will create reports and visualization on top of that to get meaningful information that is about business intelligence here important terms to know in business intelligence is these are the terms like as you are from other background i would like to just give a basic understanding on these terms data we can say like the data is a new oil like it is a new money if we are if we properly use the data we can <clears throat> lead the industry so data is like a meaningful collection of information database as i told you every company uses their own databases to store the data so the the database can be mysql or oracle or sap hana these are relational databases they store data in form of tables data warehouse is a sap uh, it is like a online analytical processing data it is like they store the data in cube in multi dimensional formats so examples of them are sap bw ecc etc reporting as we know the reporting these are the tools which are useful to create reports on top of data that we have, we that data schemas that we have created like uh, reports can be any finance report or sales report for the uh, this quarter so it can be anything and uh, the reporting it, it need not to be only text reporting it can also have charts and more visualizations and control on that so input controls and all so that it is more interactive so that analyzing users can analyze and get more insights on that so the examples of reporting tools are sap business objects 
we can say uh, one tool for e uh, from each company like from microsoft we have msbi from ibm we have cognos from sap we have sap business objects so we know like uh, how competitive this reporting is and also visualization visualization is like uh, showing the data in a more creative and visualized manner with charts and graphs and with uh, more interactivity so that uh, the users will understand the data very fine and also it is more useful for the high end users like ceos cfos they can see the data statistics in their ipads and tablets and they can take the decisions so the examples of those visualization tools are tableau business objects dashboards sap analytics for cloud sac and lumira extra here comes the bevo suit as i told you business object is a front end application it is a combination of tools it is not a single tool if you see here this above thing crystal reports web intelligence dashboards explorer live office these are all come under bevo suit but we will focus mainly on our web intelligence as part of reporting and this information design tool here the middle layer it is also part of business objects if you see here the lower section sap bw olap application database customer database xml web service these are different kinds of databases so one client might use olap database one client might use sap bw one might use mysql or oracle so they they can use any kind of database based on their requirement but our bvo what it can do is it can integrate with these databases and it can import the tables it can create a database schema which is meaningful and which is understandable by the clients so here what we do in information design tool is we will import tables based on our requirement what are all the tables like product table customer table sales and all like those fact tables we will import the tables we will do the required joins between those tables and we will create a semantic layer which is understandable by the business like here in the databases they can write anything they can type anything but that might not be understandable by the business user but in our information design tool we will create classes and objects and dimensions which are understandable in business terms like sales region quantity product low so we will change the terminology here as per the business requirement we will create logic and database schemas here and we will use this as a data source for these reporting tools so it is about information design tool and these are the bvo reporting tools it is these are the databases so it is a complete bvo suite so if you see here it is a consistent business user experience we will maintain it so integrated so the experience is always consistent and it is trusted access to information here we also integrate the security here so no one i mean like uh, only the people who has eligibility and who who are allowed to access they will only access based on their role so we will not the reports are not accessible by everyone it is based on their roles and user profile we will create some security and then only we will publish the report so it is very secure heterogeneous access over all sources means the sources can be anything like olap my mysql or uh, sap bw or sap hana the source can be anything we we are able to consume that it is a multi source perspective if we have two sources like mysql and oracle we can can create a universe on top of those two universes like if uh, sales data is stored on oracle and uh, what we say finan financial data is stored on mysql we can integrate them we can combine them using our information design tool and we can create reports on top of that so that is here multi source perspective it is a sample report like how we can create uh, we know like a tables uh, excel or some table we will not be knowing like uh, uh, it is very tough to say like in 2018 uh, for a product a what is the sales it is very tough here there 
but here if we create a report in a meaningful format we, with a slight uh, controls and click uh, two three clicks we will know like what is the sales in 2018 or what is the sales in 2022 which product is performing bad and all like this this chart is a, like a conditional formatting chart we can show like uh, we can uh, put conditional formatting so that once the user opens the report they will know like based on the color coding they can directly see that which is performing better and which is performing poor so this kind of uh, visualizations are also possible in web intelligence apart from normal reporting so as part of our training session we will cover these two tools idt information design tool it is like a how to create a database schema on top of tables i am i am including this uh, tool here so that we will know like when we are creating web intelligence reports we will know what what objects we are using where are they getting from so we will know entire thing like how it is getting loaded how the data is getting loaded so we will know all the background knowledge so for that purpose i'll start i information design tool first after that we will go for web intelligence i'll today i'll uh, give a quick introduction about the tools and uh, the view so this is the information design tool. I just wanted to uh, let you know like what is the information design tool. As I told you already, it is a tool which where we create a database schema. The definition here comes it as a information design tool is a SAP business objects metadata design environment. So here we are designed the metadata that enables a designer to extract, extract the tables from the database, define, we define classes and objects in a more meaningful manner and manipulate metadata we, we will manipulate we will write formulas to get the data as per our requirement from relational and OLAP sources relational means it, uh, the databases which store the information in table manner for example oracle and mysql OLAP sources means they store the data in a cube cube manner like uh, sap bw or ecc so whether it is a SAP source or non-SAP source, we can integrate and create some meaningful metadata in using information design tool. Who can use this information design tool? It can be used by anyone like database administrator, an application manager or a developer like us, or a project manager or a report creator who has acquired enough technical skills to create universes for other users. Report creator need not to be only create reports. He should also have an experience with IDT, like how they create. If we know the background knowledge, it is more useful for our analysis purpose. Or a security administrator. Even security can be applied in information design tool. So that is about information design tool. We create universes using SAP or non-SAP databases in information design tool. And we can consume these universes as source for these reporting tools like SAP business objects interactive analysis, which is nothing but web intelligence. Crystal reports or BO Explorer or BO dashboard. These four, these four, most of the tools can consume universe as a source and they can create re reports on top of that. Here comes the workflow of information design tool, like how we create an information universe in IDT. From now onwards, I will just say information design tool as IDT. So in IDT, this is the workflow that we follow. First, we will create a project. Project can be local or shared. Local is for uh, individual use. Shared is for public use. Like uh, if we want to share it with our internal team colleagues, we have to create the project as a shared. So, and after creating a project, we should create a connection. That connection can be also, it also can be local or secured. We need secured connection to export that connection to repository. So if we want to use and consume that universe in reports, we definitely need to be sec create a secured connection. That connection, uh, again, it can be relational connection or OLAP connection. Like uh, if the data source is, uh, relational like mysql or oracle we will go for relational connection 
if our data source or data base is a SAP BW or ECC, then we will go for OLAP connection. After that, we will need to create a data foundation. Here, the third step is a data foundation. This can be a single source or multiple source. If you are can, as I told you already, if we have data in two sources, like two databases, we have to create multiple source. If it is a only single source, we can just go ahead and create a single source data foundation. In data foundation, what we do is we will import tables. What are all the tables required for our analysis? Like article table, product, company, sales, like the tables we will import and we will make the required joins based on the requirement. And we will check the integrity, like if the joins are working properly or not, are we getting the right information or not, we will create the data foundation. And if there are any loops formed, we will remove the loops. I'll uh, I'll tell you everything in the detail in the, in the tool in the next classes. After creating data foundation, we have to create a business layer, which I told you already, like a business layer is like a creation of folders. We will create some classes and, and inside classes, there will be subclasses like a product or a re region sub product in under product we can create a, objects like product name product id and product sales quantity of sold so like that we will create some classes and objects according to the business terminology so that user can easily understand what it is after creating business layer it is finally the universe get will be getting created and we will check the integrity and if everything goes well, we will publish that to repository. Once the universe is published to repository, we can consume that in web intelligence as a source. Source of web intelligence can be anything like, a, it can be Excel file or it can be universe, it can be SAP HANA, but here we will more focus on universe because universe is also created in a business object. So we will more mostly focus on universe part. So once we publish it to repository, we can consume it for our reporting purpose. Here it is also same like uh, what here uh, we have given the description of what is project, what is connection, what is a data foundation. As I told you, it is a schema that defines the relevant tables and joins from one or more relational databases. Business layer is a collection of metadata objects, which is understandable by a business user. Query, parameters, these all we come and we will see in our information design tool IDT in live. These are the steps to create a universe in IDT. First, we will create a project. Actually, with this we need for our interview uh, purpose also whenever you be, you go to you fo go for an bvo interview there they will ask like what are the steps to create a universe in idt so these are the specific steps and, uh, steps and these are like a static we will these steps will not change so first we will create a project after in that project we will create a connection whether it is a relational connection or olap connection after that we will create a data foundation layer where we will insert tables and give the joints and all. So once we will make a database schema by joining, we will see if there are any loops and traps formed. These are the problems uh, that we face in universe. So if there are any loops formed, we have to resolve them. Otherwise, we will not, we will get incorrect data in our reports. So Further, for that, we have to check the integrity of the schema and we have to resolve the loops and traps. Once the data foundation is correct, we will go to business layer and we will create its classes and objects like state, region, uh, time dimension, like calendar, month, year, all these objects we will create. So that we will know like, we will, we, uh, if we want to see the 2022 quarter one, the uh, sales of a particular uh, product, we have to have all these objects like product ID, product name, year, month, what is the quantity, what is the sales, all these things we have to create and we have to map to the right objects from the database so that we can consume them 
in the reporting layer. We can create security profiles here. We can check the integrity and then we will publish the universe to repository so that we can consume it in our reporting tools. Yeah, as I told you, this business layer is like a folders, like customer folder, customer folder, customer class has these details like customer address, phone number, area, region, region code, region detail, salesperson, what is his gender and what is the salesperson code, year, month, details, plant, if, if we are creating some plant uh, class there, it has information like plant code, plant size, total employees, department, department code, department strength. So these are all like a business layer. We will create all these objects so that we can consume these particular objects in the reporting layer to show the meaningful report. Here, as you see, dimension, measure, attribute. Dimension, <clears throat> here we need to know these two, three things very important. Dimension is like a text data like customer name, product name, state, country, region name. These are all come under as a dimension. It is a text like, text data. Measure, it is like a KPI, key performance indicator. It is like a number. So what is the quantity? What is the sales, sales revenue? What is the profit? So these are all come under as a measure. So dimension is text data like a salesperson, region and all measure is a main uh, KPI like uh, what is this? I mean, sales amount, net profit, all these numerical data comes under measure. Attribute is like, it is like a detail level of uh, character data. I just wanted to, I just put this image here to understand uh, better like, uh, I'm telling like uh, in uh, our data foundation layer, we will import tables and we will create joins. So I just wanted to show you here, like these are the multiple tables that we can use here. Uh, if you see, uh, this is mainly dealing with the product and uh, outlook, outlet like a store details and product detail, article detail. And this is a fact table. Here also we have one important thing, like the tables are two types, dimension tables and fact tables. Fact tables are the, most important fact tables, they store the numerical information like sales revenue, quantity, profit, every numerical information is stored in fact table. Here, if you see this, is, sorry. Here, if you see, this is a shop facts. So this is a fact table, promotion fact. This is also a promotion uh, fact table. If you see here, promotion cost, what is the cost here? Here, if you see margin, amount sold, quantity sold. So these are like numbers. The fact table stores the numbers, whereas these all other tables are come under dimension table. Dimension table means then in which uh, dimension we are making the analyze, analysis, like uh, are we an, doing analysis on product side? Are we doing analysis on outlet? So these all come under dimension tables. Like it is like a perspective of analysis. Fact table denotes the measures like uh, what is the quantity, what is the margin, what is the amount, but we also need to know like uh, what is the amount means what, for which area or for which region, for which product. So for which perspective we are doing the analysis, it there comes a dimension tables. So here outlet, outlet lookup, article lookup, calendar, these all promotion, product, pro, oh, sorry, pr product, these all come under dimension tables and this come under fact tables. So we will, in data foundation layer, we will import the tables that are required and we will make the joints based on the requirements, like how these two tables are joined, what is the relation between those two tables. If the tables are scattered just like that, they don't make any sense. We have to join based on the primary keys and all. Primary key is something which is there in every table, like, uh, here it is outlet table means it is like a store table. It has a shop ID. So that is a primary key. Primary key is a key which distinguishes the records of the table. Here, if you see article for every dimension table, there will be ID which, which acts as a primary key, which is very important to distinguish uniquely article ID. So this is a primary key here. 
so in fact table what we store is the key figures like a sales revenue quantity margin we will apart uh, apart from that we also need to have these ids of other dimension tables if you see here the shop facts id is from this table shop facts table article id color code week id shop id these are the primary keys of other dimension table so fact table stores the key figures and primary keys of dimension tables so based on that the fact table will get joined to the each dimension table based on the primary key like if you see here this article lookup table is joined with article id and article id so like this it is just a i just wanted to give a brief we will go in detail later like what are joins what type of joins are there how we will uh, know like which join and which object need to be joined with what so we will know everything in detail in next classes so here this uh, entire uh, uh, what we say this uh, entire rectangle is of data foundation layer here if you see there are some folders right these are also we will only create in information design tool time period store product promotion measures these are store so it comes under a business layer first we will create a project later we will create a connection after that we will create a data foundation layer that is these tables after that we will create business layer here we will have like under store we will have store name store id store address under product we will have product name product id under promotions we have promotion uh, what we say promotions promotion id promotion flag something like that like uh, and under measures we we will have amount sold quantity sold so this the objects in this tables we will uh, write a formulas and we will create objects here so that we will directly you use these in our web intelligence reporting perspective so it is a universe schema after we finish our universe using idt we will go ahead and create web intelligence reports so this is the course coverage uh, these are the modules that i wanted to cover as part of this training so first in the module 1 we will create or we will just have an interact introduction to that web intelligence tool in module 2 we will create a sample report in module 3 we will see like how we can format the report in module 4 we can uh, see like how to work with charts how to include charts in our reports what kind of charts what are all the types of charts available and all in module 5 we will uh, see like how we can analyze data uh, by using filters input controls and all so these are the modules that i wanted to cover as part of our training so everything will be clearly cov covered as per this agenda so under module 1 i just uh, drafted here like what what are going to be covered like what is the need of reporting tools what is the launch pad launch pad is like a repository for uh, our uh, business objects it stores all the reports and uh, um, dashboards and also it is like a one stop solution for all our uh, reporting needs so what I, how it looks and what are the features of launch pad how we can work with launch pad how we can refresh our op report like uh, the report might be created long back but we need to refresh to get the real time data so how we can refresh document how we can share the reports which we have created to our stakeholders how we can open already created document how we can uh, see the report in view mode or edit mode what are all the options available so these we will cover under module 1 <clears throat> under module 2 we will create a report like what is query why we will write it we will understand what type of sources are supported in web intelligence and how can we build a query we can know, we will understand about query properties and how we can improve the performance of reports like uh, it should not stuck uh, like uh, if there is a huge data also it uh, if we fine tune the query properties we can improve the performance 
how we can create a first report, uh, how we can add document level filters to that reports, so document level prompts, what is the difference between filter and prompt, how we can add multiple prompts, and data preview option in Webby, how we can add report filters. These are all the in detail we can cover in the module two. Module three is formatting documents. We have what are the types of blocks available in report? How can we add tables to report? How can we format tables and cells? And working with formula and functions like uh, this, this is very important. Like uh, uh, everything might not be uh, our uh, based on the requirement. Sometimes we have to create our own objects and our own formulas in our web intelligence using formula and functions. So how we can do that? Working how what are the sections in reports? What are the breaks? And how we can work with cross tab type of report? Uh, and what are the rules? As I told you, conditional formatting like uh, we can put some condition like if the sales revenue is less than ten thousand for that uh, particular row, it should show in red color, red red background, so that uh, immediately user get the attention like uh, oh here we have to focus why it is less than 10,000 or some, based on the requirement, we can create rules and we can apply conditional formatting. So that is also available in web intelligence. We can sort the reports uh, alphabetically or uh, ascending or descending, or there is also option for us to custom sort. How we can copy paste the uh, already created blocks to other tabs and all, and show and hide block option. So these are all things, the formatting related details we will cover under module three. Under module four, we will uh, work with charts, which is very interesting. Like what are all the charts available in Webby? Uh, why we need to create charts and how to create chart, how to remove an existing chart. And there are also chart formatting options available in Web Intelligence. So how we can do that is uh, we will cover in the module four. In the module five, uh, it is very important because whatever we are doing, it is for uh, whatever we are creating reports to analyze the data. So to see like uh, if we create a, a static report, like uh, if I create a report for 2020 sales uh, sales values for each region of under uh, uh, under Asia Pacific countries, but if it is only for 2020 and if it is uh, static and there is if there is no control on the report if there is no interaction then it doesn't make sense right it uh, it it looks like a normal tool but in webby what we can do is we can add more interactivity like user user can change the report like uh, like uh, based on their requirement they can analyze if they want to see only for particular uh, quarter or for, for particular region, they can go and click and they can see that data changed for them for their particular uh, prompt that they have selected. So that is possible in our webby. So how how we can analyze the data that I can uh, explain in this module, like what is the scope of analysis? It is like a hierarchy. Uh, if you say like a country, state, city, it is a hierarchy. If you click on uh, US, only US related states should appear. It, it, it should not appear like all country states. So how we can enable that, uh, that scope of analysis and hierarchies in Webby, how to set up scope of analysis, how we can drilling into the report. So what is drilling it means? Uh, here we have drill options like drill down, drill up, drill by. Drill down means, means uh, we can show the country level of data, but if the user is more interested to see uh, inside, like uh, in country, if he click on uh, US, uh, we, if we enable drill mode, if he click on US, the report will be drilled down to the state level of information, like under con under US, uh, we will have multiple states with that uh, in, uh, with the sales information. So it is it will be more detailed. First, high level data will be there based on the requirement. If they click on that, they'll analyze. If they want to analyze more on that, they can click on that and they'll see the more detailed data per, for that particular country. Under the state also, if they click on particular state, they'll go to city. So like that, 
the drill down feature is applied drill down drill up drill down means from higher hierarchy to the lower hierarchy drill up means from lower hierarchy to the higher hierarchy drill by is like a for a same level of hierarchies and how we will set preferences for drilling how to impact what is the impact of scope of analysis on performance uh, there is a performance uh, uh, impact in scope of analysis so if we know like if we really want to use uh, that hierarchical data and if we want to analyze only we will enable the scope of analysis otherwise we will just directly put so that it will impact the performance so once we done with all these uh, modules we will practice some activities lab activities like uh, how we can create the reports and all here i am just showing uh, the web interface idt we will see tomorrow here this is the business objects launch pad as i told you launch pad is like a repository if you see here these are the tabs like a home home tab is like we will see what are all the applications available in bivo uh, if you see here web intelligence this symbol is for web intelligence this red ball on top of it module limira discovery information steward crystal reports bi workspace analysis edition for wala these all come under sap bivo suit only but uh, we use web intelligence for reporting purpose mostly it is a mostly used tool in our uh, industry so this is about home sections here if you see whatever we have recently viewed documents will be stored here my recently viewed documents uh, if someone store uh, sends uh, reports to our inbox there will be uh, those in uh, those reports will be here in the, in this inbox my inbox if you run uh, any documents recently so my recently run documents those will be here if there are any alerts it will appear here and this is the home tab and this is the document tabs under documents tab we have <clears throat> uh it is my documents like uh, this is like my favorites whatever reports you create for yourself you can save it in our you can save it in your favorite folder you can create one folder like a new folder you can create your own folder and you can name that folder with whatever you want so here one renuka folder has got created so if you create uh, reports you can save the reports in this folder and uh, if actually in our uh, project or in in our uh, what we say in our day to day in it industry in companies what we do is these report uh, the reports under my documents are only uh accessible to us the individual user but if we save those reports in the folders public folders so these are accessible by everyone like users our clients everyone can use this public folders reports based on their uh, role and uh, based on their access level uh, we can uh, give the access to folder level access is also possible like if we want to set uh, the sales folder accessible to uh, accessible to only a limited set of people we can create a, a group in a cmc we can add those uh, required number of people in that group and we can map that particular group to this folder so that only th those people can access the reports so that is possible in this public folders categories this is a recycle bin if we delete something it will go here we also have a search option here Uh, so if we know the report name we can search uh, type here so that the report will appear so instead of going to uh, every folder it is also possible to search but we should know the correct report name these are all under public folders so this is my documents is for our personal use whatever we create for ourselves is we can save it in our reports and we can analyze whenever we want so this is about a uh, tool uh, look and uh, if we just wanted to create one report we can create in two ways like uh, we can directly go to home tab applications we can click on web intelligence it will open the 
uh, window to create a report. So once we click on this, the first symbol, the paper symbol is new. Create a new report. This is for opening a existing report. If we want, if you know, if you want to open some report, we can go here and go to the respective folder which we want, and we can open here to create a new report. So if you see here, create a document. Document is nothing but a report. Here it is asking for us to select a data source. These are the possible data sources which Web Intelligence supports. No data source. It is like a, to create any template, we can use this no data source. It will uh, create an empty document uh, with uh, some template like formatting, uh, header, footer, and all. If you want to create, uh, we will use, but we will not use that much. Uh, the second source is a universe. Select universe as a data source. As I told you already, there are universes already created. We can use the existing universes for our reporting purpose. And if you are uh, technically, uh, if you are strong enough, we can also create our own universes. Like uh, if you are a complete BO developer, we will not just stay and create in webby reports only. We Sometimes we also have to create universes or sometimes we have to make some enhancements to the existing universes. So we have to know like uh, how we can do using information design tool. So once we know the universe, like uh, once we, uh, if it is a uh, e-fashion, it's like a sample training universe. We have in our day-to-day uh, -day life, we have multiple uh, other uh, product related universes, sales, uh, audit related universes. So, so based on the universe, we can go to universe and we can click on universe. We will select what universe we want to create a report on. And we will create a report on top of that. The sources can be universe. It can be Excel, which you have. Uh, if you have any Excel data, you can create a web report on top of that also. But this Excel should be stored in this repository, but it should not be there on your desktop. You cannot access that. So the uh, before uh, you need to consume, you have to keep the Excel in our uh, BI Launchpad repository, if you see here. It should be stored somewhere in the documents or in the folders. Then only you can consume here. You know, that can be Excel or that can be text data. BEX, as I told you already, uh, other than uh, relational uh, data sources like MySQL, OLAP, OLAP we have OLAP uh, data sources like SAP BW. There, the query is already created by using BEX query. That query we can consume directly here. So in that case, we do not need to create a data foundation layer in universe. We will just create connection, BICS connection in universe, and we can directly consume that BEX query here as a data source. Or we can use SAP HANA table uh, as a, that view as a data source here, or SAP HANA online. It is connecting to live data. So the whatever the report uh, generates is uh, like a live data, instant data, we can use that. Or a freehand SQL. If you are well versed with SQL, you can directly write a SQL code and uh, create a report on top of that. Mostly what we use in our day-to-day uh, -day life in, in IT industry is like a universe, RBEX, universe, RBEX, sometimes HANA, but I mostly work on universe and uh, BEX as a data source. If it is a universe, uh, it is coming from BO only. Sometimes we, we uh, most of the times, if it is only reporting side, we don't need to create any en enhancements in universe also. But if it is a BEX, it is just a connection. What we do in universe is we will just create a BICS connection so that we can directly consume that BEX query in reporting layer. So these two are the most widely used data sources for web intelligence. So uh, I'll just show uh, like a, if I click on universe, if you will see like these are the available universes in our training repository. Okay, and uh, this e-fashion is uh, mostly used for uh, training. So if I click on this e-fashion and okay, these are the classes and objects that are created in the universe. So these are the available objects. This uh, this uh, panel is called query panel. 
don't get overwhelmed it is just to introduce i'll go in detail in the next classes i am just uh, trying to tell you like how we will create and all this is the query panel these are the result objects whatever we require to report we will create and we will click on this state and uh, sales revenue if we just click on this these come under report result objects whatever there in this uh, this pane come under report the query filter if you want to filter uh for year if you want to filter this report only for particular year so uh, like likewise we will create a result objects and we will put filter and we, if we run the query we will uh, see uh, the report based on our uh, requirement i'll show you some sample reports yeah it is one of the report which is created to explain the input controls if you see here this we will all uh, here the year 2016 is there if you want to see the data for 2017 if you see here here it is all 2016 but if you want to see the data for 2019 we can just create a, click on this 2019 and the data comes for 2019 so that kind of uh, analysis analyzing and interactivity can be provided in web intelligence so end user just clicks on los angeles they'll see the data based on that if they want to see the data for uh, new york state within a click we are getting the required information so this is possible using this uh, web intelligence there are so many options here 